Okay, so what I'm doing today is looking um, at uh, just a quite a simple problem really. How can I light six LEDs using an Arduino? Um, and the reason I'm trying to do this is because I'm making uh, a project that involves um, a quiz buzzer. So I've got these um, six quiz buttons here. I've got six of these and they're connected via wires and I'm going to be plugging the wires into a project um, that I'm making called the um, Quizatron, Quizatron 6000. So here's one of the, the buzzers. I've got the wire all wrapped around it. And what I want to do is light one of the lights to show who's pressed their buzzer first. So I read out the question. Everybody um, tries to answer the question. If somebody presses their buzzer, and I want to light one of six lights to show which one of the six teams in the quiz um, press their buzzer first. So that should be quite a simple problem, shouldn't it? I just take um, six wires from my Arduino, six pins, and light up my six LEDs. Now I've got these um, LEDs sitting here. They're actually a lot brighter than I was expecting. Um, and uh, they're linked through a, a SIL uh, resistor array down here. I think there's a 330 ohm set of eight resistors in an array. Um, so they're going to a common ground. So if I disconnect the ground pin, they all go off, which is actually a lot more pleasant. And um, if I plug it back in again, they all come back on. And so at the moment, all I've got is power taken from my Arduino. That's all the Arduino is doing at the moment. And it's providing power. I'm taking six uh, wires from the power rail through the six LEDs through the current limiting resistor, which is obviously not limiting the current an enormous amount because they're so bright, and down to the ground rail. But I want to just light one of them, or some of the time, none of them, according to whatever the Arduino tells them to do. So the simplest solution is to take six Arduino pins and link them up. But in this particular project, I can't do that. And the reason I can't do that is because the project contains quite a few other elements. So it makes sound, it um, shows lights, uh, it shows scores, um, it reads from six quiz buzzers and it reads some other stuff from the uh, master controller um, to put it onto the next question and that kind of stuff. So I haven't actually got six pins floating around free to do anything with. So I was thinking, what is the best way to power one of six LEDs, and I only ever want one turned on, uh, with an Arduino using the minimum number of pins possible? And I came up with sort of three solutions. One of them is Charlie Plexing. One of them is using um, a serial to parallel shift register that 74HC595 and the other one and both of those I think use three pins and then the other solution is to use the, the shift register but only use two pins I'm not sure if that's going to be possible so let's just take a look at the Charlie plexing circuit first because I think it's the most interesting Charlie plexing involves quite a simple and elegant circuit so it's very clever isn't it there are three pins three resistors and six LEDs cunningly arranged so that if, for example, pin one has five volts on it, pin two has zero volts on it, then current will flow down here, lighting this LED. And pin three at this point is set into a high impedance state, so effectively like disconnecting it. So none of the other LEDs will be able to light. So the the bottom two can't light because they're not really connected to anything. The These two over here also can't light because they're not connected to anything. And this one here can't light because it's pointing in the wrong direction. So what Charlie Plexing involves doing is using the three-state or tri-state um, nature of the output pins of the Arduino. So let's rig one up. So what I've done is... I've rigged up 
um, my Arduino with three wires coming from three pins. So I just picked arbitrarily pins eight, nine, and ten. And um, so they come from the Arduino and they come in here. So we've got eight, nine, and ten here. And then um, I've just followed the, the diagram of the Charlie, Pe Charlie Plexing circuit. And what's quite unusual when you're rigging this thing up is that there is no actual power and ground um, in the circuit because the power and the ground are both provided by the Arduino pins. So some of the time, the pin on the left, for example, might be the power, the pin in the center might be acting as the ground, and the third pin is in high impedance state. So it's basically treated as if it's not even connected to the circuit. So I've got the three lines coming in, and then they go through three resistors, and then across each pair of um, pins, there's two uh, LEDs, one facing in one direction and one facing in the other. Then I've got um, two more LEDs across this pair, and then there's two LEDs across the outside pair, both facing in opposite directions. So if we take a look at um, the sketch that I've put together to do this, um, there's only one really interesting thing about it. The rest of it's fairly straightforward. And that is, how do you put a pin into high impedance state? So you can see what I'm doing. I've created a function called set pins. And I set the first pin to high, the second pin to low, and the third pin to Z. And these are just strings that I've arbitrarily picked here, high, low, and Z. Then I set the pins to low, high, and Z then Z high and low, Z low high, and I carry on, low Z high, high Z low, and finally I set them all to, um, all to high impedance, which should turn off all the LEDs. I've got a one second delay between each of these, and it will loop back to the beginning. So my set pins function takes in a string for pin eight, pin nine, and pin 10, uh, and then all it does is it sets pin eight to the value of eight, or the, the the value that was passed in in variable eight, uh, and it does the same for pins nine and ten. So here's the interesting bit: if the value is high, we set the pin to be an output pin and set a high value on it. If the value is low, we set the pin to be an output pin and set a low value on it. So that's our power and our ground pins. And well, there's a line of code I don't need down here, but um, if the pin uh, is supposed to be set into high impedance state, then I set it as an input pin. And setting a pin as an input pin is effectively setting it into a high impedance state. It won't output any volts, it won't act as zero volts, it won't act as five volts, it will just sit there as a high impedance state, reading a voltage in fact, but we're not interested in the value it's reading. So if I compile that sketch, and upload it to my Arduino. We'll see, hopefully, yep, here we go, that each of the six LEDs comes on in turn, followed by a section where nothing's on at all. So we go one, two, three, four, five, six, and then one second with nothing on. So that's Charlie Plexing. And I have to say, I like it. I like the fact that we only use three resistors. I like the fact that it only takes up three pins. And I like just the simplicity of it. I mean, there's just three resistors and six um, LEDs, and that's it. Now, the disadvantages to Charlie Plexing are that with three pins, you can only do six LEDs. Um, if you want to go for more than six LEDs, then uh, reading this Wikipedia article. So if we have three pins, we can light six LEDs. With four pins, we can light 12 LEDs. With five, we can light 20. I don't know why you would do that, because if you use a shift um, register, a serial in parallel out shift register, you can light, with three pins, you can light pretty much as many, as many LEDs as you want. So it seems a bit pointless, but certainly for the case of six LEDs and only three pins, it's a very simple and elegant solution. But I just want to compare that and see if I can beat it with a shift register. So let me set that circuit up 